How's it going to you boys? It is week six. We are on the bye, so we get to do a solid amount of recruiting to start off this episode. First things first, we've got to scout a couple guys. So Gamara Kelly looks good. Oh, I like this. This is a good start. Stevie Holmes, eh, still okay. It, Greg Sims, the athlete, going up to 66. Uh, definitely could be a quarterback for us. As we go through our weekly check for recruits, we can see that Greg somebody that we could maybe make a fight for not being recruited by the craziest schools we could gain 75 points a week however we need to find those points because we only have 250 to give him right now stevie holmes is losing 90 so we'll have to find points for him and gamara kelly we actually might not have to give any points to see him jump up onto the board i guess that means that nobody is really actively recruiting him right now before that happens though we're going to have to start giving some scholarships out to... We're going to most likely want to finish giving scholarships out. You can see we're dropping a huge amount on some of these guys. And I f think that that might be due to not offering scholarships. So let's just go through. Offer some scholarships to the guys on the bottom of the uh, board right now. And we'll see if we can find points elsewhere. So we've gone through and found 500 points to take away from players. So we're just going to finish uh, offering as many scholarships as we can this week. And then we'll see where we go from there. Five more guys ready for visits means uh, we're probably going to get this Texas State game starting to fill up. And it seems like most of them are actually going to be going to that game. However, I don't know if I can pass up that much on the uh, complimentary visits. That's a lot of points for the guard. And for David Wilson, even though there is one competitive visit with Mackey having the, the two complimentary, I I'm going to say that cancels us out. And he wouldn't get anything uh, as a bonus for the Georgia Southern game. So we'll go ahead and schedule him there. So a lot of players scheduled to come this week. Uh, we just need to make sure that we get the job done this week. Or next week, I guess. After Oklahoma survived against Notre Dame last week, they jump up to the number one spot, which puts Clemson down to number two. So maybe, maybe they have a chance to lose. But otherwise, only Notre Dame... I think it's, uh, yeah, USC, Ohio State, and LSU taking losses. That's actually kind of a crazy uh, four teams to lose in a week, but not all too chaotic of, uh, of a week last week regardless. Our Heisman watch sees Sam Ellinger jump to the top and Sam Howell out of UNC as well as Tanner Morgan from Minnesota jump up into the mix. As it turns out, Teddy Gallagher... The man who got the game ceiling interception for us last game ends up winning Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week, so that's awesome. And I just checked, apparently, the week before, Fred Payton, in our game against UCLA, wins Offensive Player of the Week for his pretty solid, albeit could have been better, performance. Let's go ahead and jump forward towards uh, this Georgia Southern game, though. Both of our coordinators have leveled up, so that's nice. That's going to help us out quite a bit. Unfortunately, Bobby Goolsby goes to Troy. And a lot of guys ready to visit this week, but it's a shame that we don't get the punter. We have a lot of points available to us in our recruiting this week, which is nice. So we can take Bobby off of the board. And then we're going to just... Ooh, I'm going to say that we're, we could give Greg Sims the full 500 here. However, losing 645 last week makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable doing that. Maybe we don't have as good of a chance to pick him up as I had previously thought. Old Dominion is getting a nice 210 bonus points towards him as opposed to our 95. So that's likely where the rest of the deficit comes from. But I think that what we'll do is give him points for this week and then just check to see where it's at next week. His... Percentage locked has jumped up quite a bit in this past week. DV Holmes, however, we can still start to make inroads on, so he's going to get the full 500 just to make that gap short and quicker. Still looking good with Michael Wood, and maybe struggling here against Wake Forest with Eric Oliver. A uh, guard that would be nice to have. Losing 45 per week is what it shows right now. That's entirely out of the bonus points, so they're giving him a max 500 at the moment. We have our visit. If our visit's really good, maybe if it's better than theirs, we could maybe take this to the offseason, but I don't feel great. Gamara Kelly, we don't have to put points into, which is 
Awesome. He's uh, again that new or that final tackle that we scouted. But I have gone ahead and looked, and we are doing fine with every other recruit uh, above him on the board right now. So we'll give him the full 200 that we can, max out our points there, and uh, hopefully get rid of that deficit sooner and increase our odds of getting him signed as soon as possible. An incredible seven more players are ready for visits, so we'll try to set those up. Um, I'm going to avoid all the competitive visits right now. So we'll see. Uh, it looks like maybe we're starting to get that Texas State game up to the point where we're going to get a lot. And if we have a situation like this where it's either a competitive and no complimentary or a competitive and three complimentary, we're going to send him to the uh, the good one. So Mark White's going to the Georgia State game. Or sorry, Georgia Southern. And uh, it looks like that's going to be the case for quite a few guys. David Williams goes to Texas State. And Carlos Sanders is going to head to that one as well. That's going to do it for our recruiting for this episode. We can go ahead and give level ups to both of our coordinators. Again, I like to max out this up tempo and recharge skills. Um, I like having that extra stamina and avoiding injuries is big. So I like to get those set up first and then start working on other skills uh, for both of our units. But personally, I find uh, these to be the, the best skill to go into first. We had another crazy week during the buy in terms of the top 25. We can see it right away. TCU and USC drop out. That's because of losses. Look at this. Tennessee, Memphis, Iowa State, Minnesota all taking losses. Notre Dame loses to Arizona State. They drop down out of the top 10. Their second loss. Penn State, number th previous number three, loses in overtime to number 20, Windiana. And a guaranteed top five loss this week as number one, Oklahoma, and number four, Texas play. Uh, Clemson did a pretty good job. 52-17 survives the curse of the number two. I think Oklahoma... At this point has broke it. We'll see if Boston College can reignite it though. We are going to make one change again here to the sliders today. I'm gonna put up the interceptions one more tick to 50. I still think that maybe we're getting a little bit too lucky with um, opposing defensive backs dropping what should be easy interceptions. So we're gonna get that to the point where I, I get punished for making those god awful throws that I've been making recently. All that being said, we can look now at our matchup for the week. Herb Street's going to go for Georgia Southern. They're 3-0. We're 3-1. We have pretty similar rankings in terms of our overalls, but they've been doing a good job moving the ball. Number five in the country in terms of their rush offense, number eight in total offense, and number 12 in points per game. So our defense is going to have their work cut out for them. Hopefully our offense can stay up to the task and keep up and look at that also number three in the country in terms of turnover differential so these guys uh seem pretty legit they have however not really played anybody they destroyed an 0-5 central michigan they beat vanderbilt who's 1-5 but they beat them pretty handily 21-6 and then do a decent job taking out ulm who's also 1-3 so 2-13 and 13 combined on the win loss for their opponents we're the first uh, opponent that they faced with a winning record so I'm kind of hoping here that we can prove Kirk wrong but it's all gonna rest on the shoulders of our defense I think we're gonna go ahead and wear the black and teals and Georgia Southern is uh, one of these teams that's been uh, you know pretty much updated they've been added essentially into the game so we can go ahead and look their helmets they have the cool ones that I love where they have the uh, the wings on the helmet and we can go ahead and see they have the uh, the blue the navy and the white jerseys and uh, right now just the white pants but I think so that we can see the cool helmets we're gonna go ahead and give them the white ones we'll, we'll let them go with the white out as they uh, come on the road and we can see now as we look both of us 77 overall they have the edge on offense we have the slight edge on defense but overall i think it does technically lean a little bit in their favor so we will hope for the best in this one our second game in conference a lot of guys visiting rush for 100 pass for 250 we probably need to get sacks 
uh, pass deflections and interceptions are, are going to be the things that we're really focusing on. We can see their top players mid 80s. You know, we've been seeing that a lot against the teams that we're playing. And I think that McCall is most likely going to play in this game. I've been impressed with Fred Payton, but I think it's time for Grayson to come back in. So it is the Battle of the Birds is what we're going to call it here uh, on the beautiful teal turf. And so uh, we're going to see, are they going to win the toss? They go with heads. That's always a mistake. They lose. It is tails. And we can go ahead and elect to kick this one off. We'll get the ball in the third quarter and see right off the bat what it is that our defense can do. Biscardi has this game underway and you know this is, looks like a returnable ball so it's going to be up to the special teams to uh, make sure that the defense gets a chance to come out on the field and they do a decent enough job there will come out in the man defense to start this game they're going to put it on the ground oh look at that a lot of space and a broken tackle early means a quick seven yard pickup for wesley kennedy the third and i would not be surprised to see them go to him again Tight end comes in motion here. I think I'm going to try to jump this snap. We're there. We hit him behind the line. I played that perfect. And then <laughs> broken tackles all over the place. He gets 33 yards. That went from perfect to terrible in a blink of an eye. Well, another first down. Uh, quarterback, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing there. But we're going to uh, get to shy there. And it's now second and six. We like to call that uh, a jet lag on my stream. He's going to keep it on the uh, read option there. We got him in a third and long. And we are going to hope for the best defending here against the pass to throw into the end zone. <laughs> Spillum had two attempts at the interception, but we forced the fourth down. They are going to come out with the field goal team. And you know what? Actually, I'm taking a timeout here. I think that we can return this. Hopefully it's not a waste of a timeout. I'm not sure the direction the wind is in, if there is any. I think it was like two miles an hour or something. But hopefully this kicker doesn't have the leg. It is returnable digs from the back of the end zone. So it'll be 109 yards if he takes it. One man oh, to beat. We had blockers on the lineman all the way in the back as uh, Oklahoma beats number four Texas. So they are having some seriously impressive victories. We were so close to taking that one to the house. Instead, I've screwed our on uh, field position a little bit, but CJ Marable, five yards there right off the bat. The defense did the job. Now we'll see if uh, McCall can come out and throw well. He finds highly, and uh, Javon puts us across the 40. Now we're going to try to keep Grayson as safe as possible, which means not a whole lot of quarterback running as uh, CJ picks up three yards there. That means that I'm going to be curious to see uh, how well he's able to pass the ball. CJ Marable picking up another seven yards, another first down for us. And we have looked absolutely lethal so far on this drive. This one's going to the end zone. McCall looking for Javon Hiley. Lucky that one wasn't picked off. Both teams now with a deflection in the end zone, and I didn't realize that was going to be double coverage when I threw it up. Second and ten, looking to go to the air again. And oh no, the pressure coming. <laughs> I thought it was caught for a second. Lucky that one wasn't picked off, but uh, Marable was there almost to grab it off of the tip. So third and 10, I've got to go to the air this time. Looking for the pass, they're rushing five, coming across the middle, Grayson throws a strike to Denmark, and Sam does a good job picking up the first down there. I do need to apologize to <laughs> Sam there because uh, in the last episode I watched it back, I called him Elliot like three times, I think. As a little bit of redemption, I might be looking for him on the fade here. We'll see the safety. No, puts himself in the right spot. So we're going to go to Dion Fountain and uh, just give ourselves a decent chance on third down. This could be risky. We're going to run it on third and four. We don't get it. I think we'll settle for the field goal. Marable, just a little bit short. Fourth and two. We're going to take the points. I think that this really has a good chance of biting us in the ass. But I got to make sure that we're scoring against this team. So, a field goal it is. We take a 3-0 lead. I just hope the defense can keep it up. So, we did a decent job stopping the Eagles the first time out. And oh my gosh, a destruction of the quarterback there on that first down. After seeing who these guys have played so far in this season, I wasn't feeling like this was going to be 
uh, necessarily the most difficult game compared to their stats. But I also didn't expect them to be playing as poorly as they are at the moment. Tight end in motion. We got to expect a pass. They're going to run the screen. And we're there. It's a loss of four, fourth and 18. The defense just dominated them on that possession. That's going to put Diggs back to return on this one. And he's going to field it awfully close to midfield. Can we get a decent return? A little bit of blocking. And he's going to go down just uh, like inside the 45. So on the final play here of the first quarter, we'll hand it off to Marable. And he'll pick up four. Decent little carry there. So at the end of one, it is three to nothing. We have the ball looking like we have a decent chance to extend the lead. And I got to say, our defense has been performing much better than I ever expected. Quick little pass here on first down. Oh, that was uh, a terrible throw from Grayson there. I don't know what the linebacker was doing, though. Didn't even put his hands up to try to stop it. As we go to the air again, we'll find likely. And Isaiah is going to pick up the first down for us. We'll hand this one off to Marable on first down, and he's going to get destroyed in the backfield. And neither team's running game has had a, an easy time of it today. I'm going to throw that one to Likely again. Didn't really seem like I was going to have a whole lot of time in the pocket, and it's an easy eight yards at the end of the day. Passing this one on third down because our running game doesn't seem like it's been all that great. And I just got to get rid of this one. Oh, we missed. Uh, I think that was Likely... Grayson is definitely out of form at the start of this one. Shaking off the rust here in the first half. Pressure coming as we go for it on fourth down. Uh, I didn't even have a chance to get away from that. Uh, terrible blocking from the offensive line. Georgia Southern's going to take over at midfield. They're going to come out and run this one towards the edge. Pick up a two. I don't think that their running game is working very well for him so far. Here on the start of their third drive, they've been held to 36 total yards. That's going to be a big chunk. Had another almost 50% onto that as he picks up 14 yards on that one. We're going to bring a big blitz on this first down. The way that they've been running is, is a little bit too much. And man, they pick up a, another quick six yards there. This could be uh, the drive where they find the end zone. Staying in the man for this one so far, they will go to the air. And a wide open little corner out for Dexter Carter. Uh, that was just too easy on the 15 yards. Look at how much space. Again, it's time to dial up the pressure on first down. This is a handoff up the middle. Kelly was there and just kind of got shoved off. I'm going to continue to bring the pressure as they keep scrambling, or as they keep running, I should say. They go triple option that time out to the right and lose the yard. We've got a third down. And we are going to hope to hold these guys to a field goal on this drive, throwing to the corner of the end zone, and that was just all too easy. Najee Thompson absolutely wide open on the 13-yard reception. 7-0 Georgia Southern. So after that, we need the offense to do something, a very returnable kickoff for Diggs. We get some blocks. We got some great blocks there, and Diggs beats a man across midfield. He's going to score. What a way to answer back the 10, and he is in completely untouched. 96 yards on the kick return. I don't know how this first man didn't get to us. Uh, you would think that a dive would have had us, but he was just late, and Diggs is too quick, so we strike back immediately and take the three-point lead. Well... The bad news is our defense didn't really have any time to rest, but the good news is we have our lead. Uh, two and a half minutes left in the half. Let's see if we can hold these guys to a field goal at most. We've been running in the man all night. We're going to try the zone on this drive as I'm expecting a decent amount of running. Spill them, can't get the tackle, slows down the running back at least. So, uh, at, you know, they, they could have got more, but they're almost at midfield, 210 on the clock. Kennedy now has six carries and is getting awfully close to 100 yards on the ground already. This uh, run goes for 13, and I'm kind of worried we're not just going to give up a field goal. So the zone doesn't seem to be working. Let's go back to the man. They will go to the air. This is a slip screen. We're there with Gallagher. Broken tackle, though, and they're going to get four yards out of the play. These guys have not elected to take a timeout yet as the clock goes below a minute and a half. We're going to be there to crunch the quarterback and uh, still no timeouts taken as this one's starting to get close to a minute to go in the half this is a big third down with the clock starting to run out they are one of three on third downs on the day 
And the quarterback scrambling, but he finds a man. There's a fumble. And they're going to pick it up. Are you kidding me? Don't. <laughs> oh, I thought for sure they were going to pick up the first down. But it's fourth and four, and we're going to take a timeout. Just to make sure that they kick this field goal. I think they will have the length. The question is, are they going to have the accuracy? Kick is up, and it misses. Pushed it right. Field goal is no good. We have a timeout in 47 seconds, maybe to extend our lead here. We need to make sure that either we are getting out of bounds or we're getting first downs on these plays as they're bringing a lot of pressure. I'm going to get McCall outside the pocket, and this is not going to be how I want it, but Marable gets six yards, and we got to go hurry up real quick on this one. Highly got almost no separation on that one as we go to 25 seconds left, and again, I'm throwing over the middle, finding Latushko, and he can't get the first down either, so uh, I don't really know if we're going to have a chance to do anything here. Only 10 seconds left on the half, basically looking at a Hail Mary here. One play, broken sack, and we just got hit. Oh, I'm taking the timeout. Fourth and six, that didn't work out at all. We're, we'll see here what we can do on the Hail Mary to end the half. McCall throwing it up. It's got the distance to get to Denmark, but it goes a little bit too far. He comes up short, and that's going to be the end of the half. So... We get the ball, thankfully, to start the qu third quarter, but we're only up 10-7, and I gotta say, I think that we're lucky. I think our defense has played really well. Diggs, the last time he was out, returned his kickoff to the house. This is in a similar spot. It would be 96 yards again. The blocking, oh, it holds up pretty well, but he doesn't have the speed. So we'll start this drive at the 33, and we'll see maybe if uh, CJ can get some decent running going. Uh, no blocking from the wide receiver forced me to cut it up field early, but at least we got two. We'll try the CPU's favorite play here as we go into the slip screen and Marable. Oh man, this has it bounce off the defender's head there, I think. Grayson McCall is 7 of 13 as we are 2 of 5 on third downs, and that's going to be 2 of 6. We are definitely not punting well, as this one's probably going to be returnable. It bounces off of the return man's head. They're falling on it. Oh my gosh, we got so close. He, he muffed it off of his helmet. I don't know what he was thinking. And uh, Georgia Southern, lucky to recover that one. Well, back to the onslaught here, the triple option. We'll see if we can do anything. Big stiff arm cheese for Matt LaRoche there as they get the first down. I have to bring a lot of pressure on this first down. They're going to go a little bit of a draw there. Spill him. Slows him down enough and we get the tackle. Second and eight. On second and eight, they're going to hand it off. Go with the counter. One broken tackle. And they're across midfield. Oh, man. You know, it is so frustrating to uh, hit these guys in the backfield just for them to bounce off as the quarterback keeps this one and is scrambling. Running for his life there loses two. It seems to me like the plays that we do the best on are when the quarterback keeps it, so maybe we should just uh, try to force that. Oh man, almost getting the first down third and inches, but we should not even be in this situation. We're bringing a massive blitz here. I don't care what, what they th say. I knew it was going to be a run. There's no way they passed there. We hit him in the backfield. It's fourth and two. The blitz worked phenomenally th there. I don't know what their offensive line was doing. It turns out they're going to go for this fourth and two across midfield. They hand it off up the middle. The blitz doesn't get there in time. And J.D. King picks up the first down with a seven-yard carry. We're going to continue to bring this pressure and hope that our man coverage uh, through the air does well enough because I know that they want to continue to running as much as possible. And we're getting a lot of tackles for loss, but we just can't seem to stop this drive. Second and 11. This one gets handed off. And again, a broken tackle in the backfield. Allows them to pick up positive yards. And just like us, these guys are facing third down woes as well. They're one of five on the play as there's a strip sack and Gunter's going to recover it. So we get our second sack of the game. That's our second forced fumble on this quarterback. Although there's a chance that his knee was down now that I'm looking at it. But we might have the ball in great field position. Just as I thought they're going to take a look at it. What do we think here? To me, it seems like his uh, butt hits the ground and then the ball pops out. I think that they're going to reverse this, but it will be fourth down and maybe outside of... Uh, yeah, maybe outside their kicker's range, though. 
So it's 4th and 12. They're at the 38. This makes this a long, long field goal. 55 yards. I got to expect we, we have the chance at the kick six. And Diggs is going to be able to bring this one out of the end zone. One man to beat. Number five knocks him out. So we got technically a couple yards of extra field position, but just so close to getting a kick six in this game. I feel like there's a ton of momentum on our side. So on this first down, I'm looking for a big shot. And so I just gave him the ball right back. Oh, that's devastating. Grayson McCall not having a good first game back. Seven of 15, only 72 yards, and now an interception on top of that. The only positive news I can take from that is that it seems like maybe we've uh, finally got that interception slider where we want it. Oh my gosh, broken tackles all over the place, and they're on the run. And just like that, Wesley Kennedy, another 30-yard carry. This man is averaging 12.7 yards per carry. He only has 10, and he's at 127 yards. That's ridiculous. We really can't afford to have this happening to us as they will go play action on this one. Man, open! And it's another first down, this time inside the 30. They will hand this one off. That's a good stop. Uh, you know, he falls for it and gets two, but hitting him in the backfield and actually holding on. Second and eight, expecting a run. They go with the quick screen. I don't know who was there to block for him. This Darren Anderson just gets absolutely leveled. So a big third and eight here is what's on the line. They're going with the uh, slip screen again, and we're there to stop it. I, they have run this a few too many times and as the third quarter comes to a close we have a three-point lead but these guys are in field goal range i got to expect they hit one of these definitely within this kicker's range the question is will he find some accuracy or is that the next thing that we need to up on the sliders that one looks to be good and he just missed it so that's the next thing that we're upping on our sliders for for next episode is we're going to give them a little bit more accuracy although that one was actually short so even though he would have missed if he had the uh, leg for it it doesn't matter because he's too weak marable gets two yards there and we need to have a good drive here i'm definitely worried about uh, the outcome of this game if we can't manage to score more points on this drive however that rush goes for a loss of two and it's just like that it's third and ten Got to go to the air on third down here. I'm looking for quite a bit. Going to get outside the pocket. And this is a tough throw, but can we find Brown? We can. Deep downfield holds on to it. Takes a big shot, but Cameron Brown, 34 yards, gets us that first down. The worst part so far about this game is that we're not going to do very good on our recruiting goals. Is Brown, nice catch there. Jukes a man out and gets 20 yards, but we have just over 100 passing yards, and we have seven total rushing yards in the game. So I definitely don't see how we're going to get to 250 passing and 100 rushing. As uh, we will find Javon Hiley diving inside the 10 to pick up a first and goal. That's a nice catch. And Grayson maybe finding his stride late in this one. First and goal. We're going to go to the air again. And oh, no, I didn't mean to throw that. Oh, we had a guy out towards the corner of the end zone. But by the time that I hit his button to throw it to him, he was running back in. And so it goes straight to the defense and we end up throwing a pick. How disastrous. So now with four and a half minutes left in the game. A oh, fumble! Oh, 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 oh. Dang it, we're, we've been so close to recovering those. But with so little time remaining in this game, we just need a, a good stop and the defense has got to be feeling it. They have a man open. Knock him out of bounds third and two. I really sold out to stop the run on that last one. And now as they come with trips to the right, we're going to bring a lot of pressure here on this one. They run up the middle. We hit him, but he just gets enough to pick up that first down. I'm definitely starting to grow wary of bringing so much pressure because we're getting to that point where they're going to need to start passing. And I don't want to get burned on a big one. But I guess while I'm worried about that, we're out here just getting embarrassed by the uh, the running game as they go with an option here. Quarterback fumbles it again. He picks up his own fumble and he picks up nine yards. Oh, this quarterback has no ball security, but they have not been punished. He can't keep getting away with it is what it's got to feel like at this point as the defense is just struggling, although that's a good stop. Now under three minutes to go in the game. 
This is another handoff out towards the edge. One broken tackle and we finally bring him down. Third and five. This is a big chance for the defense to get off the field. I am absolutely expecting them to go to the air on this play. I was kind of thinking slip screen and yep, it is a slip screen. We can't get there with Gunter. We got blocked and we missed the tackle. Thankfully, Matt LaRoche just doesn't get upfield fast enough. So it's fourth and three with two minutes to go. All it's really going to take for us to win this one at this point is a first down as there's a minute and 50 and their clock is still burning here. Fourth and three. You would think they would want to snap this as quick as possible, but it seems like maybe they don't know what they're doing and they're going to wait until two seconds here to snap it. So if we were trying to block it, this would have been a great time to do it. But instead... They will burn some a, a lot of clock for us, and we're going to feel this with a minute and 26 to go. Diggs burning clock beautifully by just staying alive on this return. Still on his feet, Diggs! One man to beat, he gets blocked, and Diggs probably shouldn't take this one into the end zone, but I'm gonna let him because it's an 84-yard punt return out of nowhere, and he has just been unstoppable today. It's now 17 to 7, and I gotta think in the back of my mind, did they let us do that on purpose in some sort of plot to get the ball back? Because they do now have it with a minute and 12 and all their timeouts to work with, so maybe it was some just big brain, high IQ play that it's too, too much for me to think of. I mean, they did just get 16 yards just like that. We'll see what's going to happen a minute to go now. I mean, I got to think that there's no way we give up two, although this looks like it's a quick touchdown. Not quick enough to catch him, and Darian Anderson goes 59 yards into the end zone. So just like that, it's back to a three-point game. And it is all down to our hands team to make sure that we stay in this. If we give up this onside kick, we're in trouble. Denmark holds on to it. Oh, I think that's got to be it. For sure now, a first down on the ground should end this one. We're going to see them take their timeouts. The question is, can we uh, pick up that first down or we, will we have to give them the ball back? We need the offensive line to really step up and manhandle their guys, and that's going to do it. Marable picks up the first down just barely. 50 seconds to go, and Georgia Southern has one timeout left. So... We continue to get lucky and get in these positions. McCall in his first game back from injury is going to get to do back-to-back -back victory formation kneels. And that's going to be all that she wrote. 17 to 14, a low scoring game, which saw us with zero offensive touchdowns. Hey, look, we earned a trophy. I mean, <laughs> like a kick return for a touchdown, a punt return for a touchdown and a field goal. That isn't something that you see often, and I think we might have gotten a little bit lucky in this game. We did, however, throw two picks, and they got lucky to recover, like, 30 fumbles. At the end of the day, turnover battle doesn't matter much, though, if you can't turn those turnovers or lack thereof into points. And, man, college kickers, am I right? Imagine, if they just had a competent kicker, they definitely win this, probably by two scores. I mean, they missed how many kicks, and we were just struggling to uh, to move the ball. I mean, you can see 20 rushing yards, 137 passing. We had 157 yards of offense in the whole game and eight first downs. Sure, we did essentially have two drives taken away from us due to the kick return and the punt return, but that's just not going to cut it. Aaron Diggs ends up as our offensive and defensive player of the game. Now, the reason I think, and, and we can't really count this as, as a true player of the game, is that uh, this game, for some reason, when you field a field goal, like you're going for a kick six, trying to return one for a touchdown, it counts that as a fumble recovery. So, while he was very impressive in the return game, uh, the stats that they show here are a little bit weird. But we end up surviving here. We moved to four and one. We give Georgia Southern their first loss uh, against the first, you know, team with a winning record that they play. And I'm curious, we'll advance the week here to the game where we will go on the road to Troy. We'll take a look to see what happened in the top 25. And how about that? While the visits weren't necessarily great, we're going to get some commits. Ryan Fordnall at the uh, running back spot. We get Donald Dunn and Andrew White, a center and a right tackle. 
and we have a bunch of other visits and a bunch of more guys ready to visit so this uh this could be going well for us in the top 25 oklahoma ends up winning the red river shootout in overtime 41 38 against now number eight texas so there's gonna be one loss for us but again we get a lot of a lot of chaos number seven georgia falls to mizzou and number or previous number seven and previous number 12 penn state falls to a now number 12 michigan and then falling out taking losses were the previous 13 wisconsin indiana and iowa state so a pretty crazy amount of uh losses so far um what is this one two three six undefeated teams left in the top 10 and a lot of them are gonna have to play each other oklahoma Oklahoma State obviously will have to play North Carolina and Clemson will have to play and and then of course Auburn's not gonna have an easy time <laughs> sorry wow just like real life I kind of skipped over Cincinnati there they might be able to run the table um and then Nebraska is not gonna necessarily have an easy time with the rest of the Big Ten especially because Michigan sitting just behind them at number 12 and if we look at the media poll, which we haven't paid a whole lot of attention to, but if we take a look at it, there is a big spread in terms of uh, first place votes. Six different teams, including that uh, top 10 Cincinnati, getting some first place votes from the media. So that's like kind of as far as I've seen it go. We will definitely have our eyes on the Bearcats here for the rest of the season to see if uh, if they're able to get the recognition that uh, maybe some people would say they deserve in uh, this real life season a quick look forward towards next game we can see that uh, herb street as he should is going to pick us to beat troy but that's going to do it for this episode thank you so much for watching and it was pointed out to me in the comments that technically nothing is for free however subscribing to this channel is pretty dang close so if you want to, I would really appreciate it if you guys could subscribe, if you enjoy the content, and if you like the video, please feel free to hit the like button. That being said, I appreciate the support, and if you are looking to catch some more content, we are live often over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. But regardless, thanks again for watching. It means the world to me. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.